Uh oh, got a new track today. Here we go. Uh. Mm. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Oh, I feel like Nikki about to come out. Yo. 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 Is the volume good? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Trying to be messing with me. Trying to be telling me. Bigfoot, cut them in the bigfoot. <laughs> I'm on channel three. Airbnb. I'm in a me. My name is Nikki and I got name. <laughs> That's her. <laughs> okay. Uh oh, Dally on the track. Dally on the track. Dally on the track. That's your daughter. That's your kid. Yeah, she your daughter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She not your friend. Yeah. 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 I'm not one of your little friends. That's what I'ma tell yeah. her. Uh-huh. Dang. Yeah. That's real bold. Yeah. That's real bold. Yeah. That's real bold. Yeah. Watch it unfold. Seven thousand diapers and I'm tired of it. Mm. I'm tired of all this baby pee and well, mm, well, you thought I was gonna well, do it. Well, they be waiting. Wait, Raylan? Y'all be anticipating. It's starting to get on my nerves a little bit, but listen. To go. Well, you know what's crazy? I posted that video about me talking about like I cuss sometimes, and like that video did so well on Facebook. And I'm just like, of course it did. Like it's just, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm just tired of trash music. Hey, let me stop. Been, I don't want y'all people, to keep saying that I I don't like church. So I'm gonna be quiet. It's no, it's the mentality, bro. It's not that we don't like church. Don't tell people that. But, I love the church. It's just some of the people. Well, I am yeah. the church. Just I don't like some of y'all. Maybe I should start addressing them like that. I don't like what y'all do. Facts. But the, here's the thing: these niggas know who you're talking about, bro. They know that you. They they trying to like, ooh, you talking about God? No, nigga, I'm talking about you. You're a terrible person. Y'all mean church is lit though. Him. I love God. You don't love God. What's wrong with you? Shout out to uh, Darius Waller again for the um, beat for this episode um i'm gonna put his instagram on the page again i mean on the screen again christian what, you, what, what was that i don't know <laughs> yeah. don't look for him i'm baby. not because they're gonna come find yeah, me exactly anyway. uh. exactly <laughs> no more strays <laughs> no more strays no more please This beat kind of go hard though, bro. Ain't no, this lie. is yeah, it's, it's fire and it's real chill. Matter of fact, I want you to make me a beat with this ending sample under a hard R&B hit and bring it back to me. Thanks. Dream Lab music. <laughs> Welcome to episode to fourteen of the Dream Lab hey, podcast. Season two. Season two, episode fourteen. We hit this fuck. What? We it's your, fourteen it's your captain. years old. <laughs> We're fourteen years old. That's. <laughs> Report. Okay, speak it, speak it. <laughs> it's your Captain Dre Perry, and I'm here with my co-pilots. I got Chrissy B. I got Kev Stewart in the building. Um, you should call me Rev Kev. Rev Kev. I like Rev Kev. Rev, okay. Somebody gave me that before. Rev Kev. Rev Kev. Rev Kev. It was somebody old, wasn't it? No, he was a white guy. Oh, that was gonna be my next yep. question. Okay. I love you, Brad. That's my guy. Brad. Brad. Bless you, Brad. Freaking Brad. And could sing his behind. Off. Really? really? If you ever heard Brad sing, yo, <laughs> how tall is he? He's married with three kids. Oh man! Why? Why is that? Why is that a work? Like, why is that a question? Like, because my sister's a stallion. I, he, hear, hear me, hear me. Let's hear this. But, but, okay. <laughs> Especially when you deal, when you've dealt with certain things, like the first question is just like, well, how tall is he? Like, would it matter? Like, if he was a really good person. Because there's tall people out here and they're terrible. They're terrible people. Absolutely. The short ones be terrible too. <laughs> that, no, but here's the, that's what I'm saying. So our, the physical is always the first thing that we go for. And in reality, we want somebody to truly love us and somebody to really be there for us. And yeah, but do you lay down with a sack of potatoes and make love to it? <laughs> My point. <laughs> I, but so end of the so day, if he's not tall, then that's what it is? No, that can't just be a preference. But let's hear it from you because it's your thoughts. Yeah, no, go ahead. I'm just talking crap because I'm no, short. me interrupting her. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, honestly, I just... Because I've dealt with... Short niggas? Little people? Wow. Short niggas are attracted to tall women. 
like a lot that makes oh. sense challenge yeah. Yeah. no that's no that's exactly what it is that's exactly what I it mean, is i mean somebody literally told me like yeah i want to climb that tree i said whoa every short nigga Hold on, not every that? short nigga because i've never used it oh, but short want, niggas use that line a lot which is wild to but me. it's just like how you i want to be able to climb but i can't so mm. i mean you could if you go stand down by the tailgate of the pistons game i could teach you how to tailgate <laughs> What's happening right now? You got a tailgate. You know, um, sometimes go stand down there by that bus. So I'm, I'm mm-hmm. just, I'm just standing, I'm standing up for all of the short niggas. Oh, um, you're sitting all. down <laughs> <laughs> because you're always petty to me. Put in the comments if Draylen is always petty with me at the beginning of every show. It's my turn today. That was pretty smooth. I wow, no, I, it was great it timing. Was. Hanging with Draylen. Yeah. You pick up certain traits. It's great yeah. timing, but um, you go find a cliff. Here you go. <laughs> y'all see how you does see? My own brother. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, y'all, it's 117,000 degrees outside. Yeah. So, um, And Draylon finally figured out that the vent wasn't open. Bro, the vent is never open in this room. So we, we be suffered here burning for these up. episodes. Do you hear me? We, we came in this hot room for you guys. And for us, though. But for you, too. We love yeah. you. If you can hear Dallas in the background, oh, well, that's my daughter. Period. We got a niece. Um, woo woo. He got a daughter. Woo woo. We got a niece. Woo woo. He got a daughter. Woo woo. Mm, 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 Change the keys. I did. Don't. I, I was just. I wasn't even paying attention to that. I was just letting you finish. See. Next. Let's go. <laughs> anyway. Um. <laughs> so first of all, what up though? How y'all feeling? I feel good. Yeah. I feel good. Oh. Uh, uh. Y'all, that's actually the first, this is probably the first episode that I can honestly say I do feel good. Like, yeah. my vacation was amazing. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, okay, talk about it. I, talk I really about it. I went on a five-day cruise. We ended up staying out of town for seven days. But it all worked out for me. It was seven days. But it all worked out for me. All right. We went to Miami. Um, Carnival Cruise music. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> so we went to Miami, y'all. Let me say this. To all of y'all out there that's about to be deep, I'm about to really, you know, be y'all in. I love, I don't love it, but I do enjoy hookah. But I only enjoy the hookah in Miami. I don't know what y'all put in the hookah here um, in Detroit, but it literally would take my voice for weeks, which is why I stopped. But I'm not going to lie to you. I thoroughly enjoyed the hookah in Miami. Mm-hmm. And I think also, too, because they said we were outside, so you weren't constantly inhaling the soot that was in the air okay. from being in a closed room with hookah. Mm-hmm. But the hookah, I really want to, well, it's two things. I want to just, I want to understand what the meaning of it is and why they started doing hookah and to know if there's like some type of symbolism to it. Mm. Because they, the, the way that they're, I don't know how to, pronounce it or say it but y'all tell me i think it's like a canister whatever they bring the coals out on mm-hmm. there was a specific design on it i believe yeah. and there was like this canister that was over the coals so mm-hmm. i was like is this what's making this more palatable because literally if i smoke hookah my voice is going to be gone for like two weeks mm. when you do it up here yes okay. but, but there was a different experience i'm telling but i but i think the guy told me it's because we were outside but i'm like I guess that do make sense because if you're smoking hookah in a closed room, it's like constantly, like you're constantly mm-hmm. inhaling it. But because we were outside, it may have been better. Mm-hmm. All I know is that was the best hookah I ever had in my life. So has that been consistent, like multiple, like different occasions, like the Miami hookah? No, I'm just going off with the hookah from that one. <laughs> All right, gotcha. <laughs> no, I used to uh, smoke hookah like after high school really and it just I, it didn't do anything for me i i i just i i think i did it sociably like i was with friends mm-hmm. um but that was it it was just like yeah and then i actually used to have some like hookah pins mm. um yeah i think it was really? just trying to be cool you know just but it was like I'm trying to be cool nigga that was me <laughs> <laughs> i'm getting attacked by my own friend <laughs> mm-hmm. Not, so uh, how so what was the difference for you between the hookah pin and the hookah um nothing <laughs> really? like bro i don't i don't know like i i think i was just it was just a phase that i was going through but Perfect. you know yeah yeah i, I enjoyed it like it's another place here um cocaine is a different Bloomfield. story i'm not I'm doing that kidding. no i'm, I'm joking, straight guys joking no there's a restaurant here in michigan <laughs> in bloomfield hills that does hibachi and hookah and it was amazing 
Are you crazy? Because I'm not doing cocaine. No, listen. No, Why did you say this? Are you crazy? Oh. <laughs> it was an accident. <laughs> Not you sitting in signs, nigga. He said, Are you no. crazy? I'm not, Cause I'm not doing cocaine. But now that I think about it, the hookah at that restaurant, I guess, was pretty good. I haven't been in a while, but it's a hibachi grill here in Michigan in Bloomfield, where they do um, hibachi and hookah, but it's outside, mm. and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm. Now I'm not a hookah smoker all the time, but you know, when you relax and it's a good time. When you're out, yeah. Well, um, that was. Thank you for letting us know. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to say something How smart, you, but Dre? I just I, I could it could. How are you? I'm Dre? fantastic. I um I'm fantastic. How was your first Father's Day? Oh yes, tell us um, about it. It was great. It was it was great. My uh our sis my our sister mm-hmm. Elisa's sister our, my sister in law came to um get the baby. She was just like um yeah I'm pick, keep the baby for the night. God bless you. Like it was just great. We were checking sleep. Absolutely. <laughs> Did <laughs> we? See, y'all probably slept down. Okay, like it. It. I mean, of course, we kind of randomly woke up because we're used to waking up in the middle of the night. But it was. Oh my god, it was, and it just that little break. So I was just very thankful for that. And then um, at least got me a massage for nice. Father's Day. So I'm gonna pick one of these days and I'm gonna go get that mug. Live um, because I be careful with the ones to. over here because they get shut down for happy endings. I was about to say, oh. Oh, he's gonna say which one. <laughs> We'll talk about that offline. Now I've never joking, had a happy joking. ending before. Y'all go there, but there was a couple of we was. I did not hear about that. We were talking about it at work today. It was three of them in my comb that got shut down because they were what? doing what well, they were calling it sex trafficking or not self trafficking. Prostitution. No, it's a word they use like housing or something. It was weird. Housing. But yeah, one of them I know got shut down because me and my father. You trying took my to father get housed? There, but it was two more. Uh oh. House. Let me just stop this story now. <laughs> All right, sorry. No, I'm trying to get a house. <laughs> He's trying to get a house. Trailing is crazy. <laughs> um, but no, other than that, it's been great. Life Good. is great. Um, God has been giving me just a lot of revelation, showing me a lot about myself, and um, I think that's like when the Bible says, like you ask, and you know, he'll, like God will deliver. He'll show up. Like mm-hmm. when when you knock on the door, he'll open it. So it's like. The things that I've been asking for, especially when it comes to God revealing more about myself to me, um, He's been doing, and it's it's been a, a journey, and that's I, I feel like I say every week, but it's 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 been great. Like I'm gonna talk more about this thing that blew my mind today, and it may not even blow y'all mind. It probably will, but I'm I'll yeah. share it. But Christian, it's 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 your turn. How are you? Oh, oh I'm good. Oh, okay. I'm good. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. Okay. Um, this week. So far, I mean, it's only Monday, but this week so far has been good. Since the last time we Since, met. Yeah, because last week was a trying week. Mm-hmm. I was tried on every side. Yeah, the me. way you just tightened your mouth just blessed me. So uh, like you so serious. Because it was like the most Do trying week I've had. Hang on, because that just happens soon. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are dumb. <laughs> but um, it was the most trying week I've had in a minute. Just like I feel like on my job, personally, everything, it was just if it wasn't one thing, it was the other. And mm-hmm. so um, I had a little moment, but I bounced back from it. And this week I'm like, it's going to be a great week. And so far it's been great. So Absolutely. Um, really trying to work on being intentional with like this positive, you know, speaking positive to what? speaking positively and That's you know it. the mindset and i've really been trying the words that i speak um i've been really trying to work on being intentional with yeah doing that that's so good yeah we gotta um i'm i'm we're gonna do an episode dedicated to that specifically like as far as words and the importance of being impeccable mm-hmm. with your words the importance of like being intentional about what you say yeah. um because we just we experience this stuff and we be like man why am i dealing with this I'm like bro we are so used to talking a certain way we are so used to speaking a certain way because it's the culture because it's the mm-hmm. environment that we grew up in that's the struggle talk of your mom and your yeah. grandparents and your mm-hmm. aunts and all of them that's the that's the that's the the talk that you got from other people and now you have adopted it and you have now, and you don't even realize how it's like 
damaging yeah. to your life. Yeah. Until it's revealed to you, that'd be the shock for me. Be like, oh my god, I've been saying this a long time. And it's yeah. just something that we say and that we laughed at. Like, I think you shared a post of like, stop saying this, this, that. Yeah. I'm like, I say half that list. Um, so I got literally. Stop. But um, I will say though that these the trying week or whatnot showed me that I'm starting, not starting, but I'll say starting because we've talked about this throughout. You know, like the last season and stuff. As far as self worth and mm-hmm. self value, mm-hmm. absolutely. That I um and see, am seeing that more. You know, like I had a situation on my job that, not to get all into it or whatnot, because I'm still employed there. So praise <laughs> God. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I had a situation that before I used to just be like, oh well okay Mm. you know like that people pleaser not wanting to have any conflict and things like that and not that i approached it in a conflicting way but Mm -hmm. it was like you know what i can hear what you're saying or i can receive what you're saying but at the same time i don't receive it like i know that um i know what i bring to the table absolutely i know my value i know my worth i know my work ethic like when we talk about self-worth and self-value that applies to not only your job it applies to friendships Mm. it applies to relationships it applies to everything in your life interactions and so that really showed me like okay you stood up for yourself you 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 seeing you know what you bring to the Mm. table and God, I've been and you standing on it, standing yeah. on it, for you standing sure. on it. Yeah, even you know, uh, somebody checked in with me today about the situation, and, and you know, sometimes again in the past, I'll be like, Oh, it's okay, you know, mm-hmm. it's nothing wrong. And I was like, yeah. No, I still truly believe that you know, that was some BS, right? You know, I, I, I know what I've done, I know what I've been working toward these past six months, and so for you to bring that to me as a reason mm-hmm. to not give that up. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's sense. fine. Mm-hmm. That's fine. I yeah. will go elsewhere. Not saying I'm quitting. Okay, but you know, <laughs> I, I will grow elsewhere. Let Absolutely. me say that I will Absolutely. grow elsewhere because you're not going to keep on holding me back. Absolutely. And so, um, <clears throat> dang, because I had something similar, not similar as far, to that degree, mm-hmm. but at work, like I'm so used to explaining myself or feeling like I have to explain myself mm-hmm. because how people in the past have made me feel like I had to like answer to the, in my yeah. every move. So now like, especially like at work, um, I was telling my, my boss something and instead of saying, Hey, well I have to clock out early because I got to do X, Y, and Z and this is, Hey, I got something going on. I got to clock out mm-hmm. and that should be enough for you. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people over, we talked about boundaries in the very first episode. A lot of people overstep those boundaries and now they feel like they have, where are you? They have mm-hmm. access to you. What, where are you? Who, what, what are you doing over here? What is it? And it may be family. It may be friends. It may be your mm-hmm. boss. It may be your church pastor. It may be whatever it is, but you have to understand, like you said, like, okay, I'm only going to go as far. I'm going to like stand up for myself yeah. at one point and I got to speak up for myself. So, I kind of want to go into it um, because this will help me kind of talk about the, I guess, the revelation I had today Mm -hmm. about unlearning um, the the bad stuff, I guess. And I'll I'll come up with a better title for YouTube. Right. (laughs) Um, But unlearning. Unlearning the like the trauma. So like our bodies literally like. It retains that the, the stuff that happens to us it holds on so to it. i'll give you an example right so i don't know if y'all can see my board over there i finally cleaned them off and up starting to update mm. and one of them says remember the pill and if you look at that you might be like okay what is he talking about Go so on. it's a reminder to me so i have a, a I'm, I'm let me be very careful how i say this growing up i've always had the issue with swallowing pills mm. Um, it, you didn't like swallowing pills? I, did, I just didn't like swallowing mm-hmm. pills. Like I would because I had to take medicine and vitamins and stuff. So I take vitamins daily. Mm-hmm. Um, but taking a pill, so it's so crazy. Like when I, I didn't notice it, but I would take a pill, drink the water, and the pill would just sit in my mouth for a second, and I would just like calm my body down, and then I would swallow the pill. Mm-hmm. And I was just realizing today, I was like, oh, bro, it's, it's something it's something with, with with that that's that's causing your body to tense up. Because mm-hmm. even though you know that, like, at least she, you know, because of the condition that mm-hmm. she grew up with, um, 
that she's used to taking medicine. Mm-hmm. So so it was, it's nothing for her to like take three, four pills at one time, take it, boom, mm-hmm. and get to continue conversation. For me, it wasn't the same. So I'm like, why is that? I'm like, why why do I tense up like that? Like why why am I doing it? And I'm just realizing, you know, as a kid, like I used to hate when they used to do the like the, the throat culture. The strep throat. Yeah, they used mm-hmm. to like uh swab like your tonsils and stuff like that. It, it I, I used to cry and I remember my grandfather was the only one that was able to kind of like keep me calm. I remember he took me to the doctor one time I was sick and I I he knew like Oh, he don't he don't like that. Like he, you know, like he gags or whatever it is. Just mm-hmm. he doesn't like it. And what I'm realizing is a lot of that is just our mind. Mm-hmm. It's our mind. And so I'm like, if I if I relax, if I tell myself every time, hey, it's it's okay. This is it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. Relax, relax. So I took one of my vitamins because I always take them one at a time because <laughs> I, I have a hard time swallowing pills. But this time I took one and then I grabbed another one and I took it. And when I took the second one, I was like, same thing, bro. You good. And I was relaxed and I swallowed the pill and nothing happened. I didn't choke because I remember when I was younger, I was seeing my little brother choke twice before, like it, with, you know, eating something he choked. And then one time at church, he had a peppermint and we were getting ready to go up there and sing. And right before we went up there, I noticed that he was choking. And so like that type of stuff mm-hmm. is in the back of your head. And so now my body has this trauma um, uh, uh, response or it's, 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 it's like my, my body tenses up when it comes to that. Like when I eat, I take my time because mm-hmm. I remember when I was younger, I, I choked on some food. I was able to kind of like get it, mm-hmm. you know, to, I guess unchoke. <laughs> I'm not sure, spit but I, yeah, not, not even spit it out, but so right. So I wouldn't choke anymore. But the thing is, I was in a room by myself, mm-hmm. and I remember thinking, like, what if no, what if I, I would have continued to choke and nobody else is in here? Yeah, like I could have died. You know, like those thoughts. So mm-hmm. that type of stuff, that type of thinking, will then um, rest in your body. Mm-hmm. It will take take residence in your body and so anytime you get ready to do something that 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 reminds you of that moment your body will tense up mm-hmm. so then i start thinking about because everything if you take a principle if you understand the principle you can apply it to everything else right mm-hmm. so i start applying it to other areas of my life that i notice that i tense up in first of all you have to be aware that you are tensing up or that you aren't being your full self or you're kind of like being shy or timid right mm-hmm. that's the first thing is you got to be aware of that so i was aware i'm also aware that sometimes when i sing i don't give i i, I tense up Mm-hmm. Like in rehearsal, I can go there, but when, when it's time to sing, I I I'm noticing I'm like, dang, why can why can I hit the note? I was able to do it in rehearsal. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was able to do mm-hmm. what what is going on, and I'm noticing it's a psychological thing. Like it's it's literally like I, I'm I'm tensing up because I'm afraid that I'm gonna hit a bad note or my voice is gonna crack. Mm-hmm. And at one point when I used to sing, I didn't I didn't care about that stuff. I was just singing, and honestly, that was when I was really being my true self. But I realized that it was in church that where I would, if I made a mistake or something like that, certain people would kind of like laugh or 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 like make a face or something like mm-hmm. that. And so that ended up taking a place in my body, in my mind. And so every time I would go to sing, especially if it was a higher note, my even if I didn't remember it. Mm-hmm. my body was like going back to that moment and so then i would tense up and i wouldn't be able to be able to 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 perform or execute the way i know i i can and the way i know i should yeah. and so i'm like okay now that i know that and it's not gonna happen overnight but now when i take my vitamins because i take them daily this is a principle now that i can practice daily mm-hmm. i can every every day i can grab my my vitamin my pill and take it and remember the pill remember that i just need to relax and if i remember that every time i approach something that i'm always tensed up about or that i'm afraid of stepping out on faith Mm -hmm. in or whatever the case is because of a past experience i can say you know what that was just there and that's all it was like it, it 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 doesn't have to be true to me yeah it does i don't have to accept it anymore i can reject it i don't have to it does not have to be true Mm -hmm. and No, that's yeah. good. I mean, honestly, us doing this podcast or whatnot has really shown me. Um, I I knew the mind was a powerful thing or mm-hmm. whatnot, but this helped. This in therapy like helped me realize like the mind is a powerful thing. Unlearning certain behaviors, you would think that it would just be like okay, real quick, 
stop doing that. But you really mm-hmm. have to be intentional and you have to be consistent with, yeah. you know, unlearning, you know, certain behaviors, Absolutely. certain trauma, toxicity and things. So that that's good. That's because what good. it does is like that's one instance. Right. Mm-hmm. But think about all of the little things. Those things make up you. Mm-hmm. They yeah. make up who you are. So now when we go about life, it's all of these things show up when we make decisions on who we're dating, how we take uh, criticism, Mm -hmm. um, everything because of those experiences. And so it makes up our life. If you don't if you're not aware of it, you, you won't be able to really reach your full potential. And it's a part of you. It's almost like the movie Get Out. Mm-hmm. Um, where it's like you're in the passenger seat and you know, nigga, this is not me. And I, I'm, I, I know I could go further than this, but something else is driving me. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And it's, it's, it's these, these systems we're in or these experiences that we've had or the trauma that we've experienced that, that, that build all that stuff up. Mm-hmm. And so we got to get to a point where we have to unlearn it and you have to be aware. It's going to take some meditation. I, growing up they would just like pray 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 and it's just like prayer is you making your request known mm-hmm. it's you but prayer over it's an umbrella like term because prayer is a conversation right so you're making your request known but prayer is also god also responding so there is there's a conversation we always just go god this and god that, and we just pray 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 in jesus name amen and then we done mm. and i'm just like it's gonna take more than that yeah it's gonna take we know faith without works is dead but do we really apply that do we really apply it or, or do we really just just recite it? Just recite it. And so I'm getting to the point where I'm tired of just reciting scriptures. Like people know the genealogy of Jesus, but they don't apply the actual word of God to their life. Mm. You 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 got an A in Bibleology. That's cute. But your life is hellish. H E <clears throat> L L. <laughs> I am so I and it's not I'm not saying hellish like you out here causing hell in people's lives I'm not saying that you out here screwing or drinking or do I'm not that's not what I'm saying I'm saying you live in a hellish life like you're not living to your full potential mm. that abundant life that Jesus was talking about yeah you see what I'm saying um and in order to get there you have to do the work and then we talked about it before it's gonna it's gonna hurt it's gonna it's gonna be uncomfortable it's gonna be uncomfortable it's gonna take a lot so but it's um, worth it i mean if you put the time in get closer to your mic please uh uh-uh. if you put the time in it's really <laughs> worth it that that was one thing that the lord spoke to me about a couple of weeks ago um because i always reference like the be some own stuff and how she's made me get into my word more and pray more and listen to god but that was the thing he told me in the shower like you know the formula. Mm. Like pray, but then give me some time to speak back. A lot of times when I really got into meditation mm-hmm. with the with my with the mind after prayer, I would do 15 minutes in the word. Like, I'm sorry. I would do probably like 10 minutes in the word, 10 minutes of prayer, and then 10 minutes of meditation. Mm-hmm. But meditation taught me how to quiet my mind and to look and listen for the mind, the voice of God. Yes. Listening is so important. It really helped because it it helped me to control my thought process that in that moment, I was able to work on blocking out everything that would have hindered me from hearing him clearly. Mm -hmm. Because you're sitting there, you're sitting there quiet, trying to meditate. At that moment, everything that could could and can distract you is running through your mind. Mm -hmm. Dragons, butterflies. Butterflies turn into dragons. Listen, bro, you so focused on everything else. Nope. Once I really sat there and was like, took some deep breaths and it took time mm. it didn't just happen overnight so people like oh so it should happen no sometimes when you've been out of fellowship with the lord or just out of that that pattern of doing what you're supposed to do it does take time to get there but meditating is a very powerful yes a very powerful thing and then two if you like meditate on scripture and you're quiet and you sit there you'll get revelation but it's the part of, of prayer, like Draylon just said, that we don't actually be quiet to listen. Exactly. Everything just, is just this. It's quick yeah. because no. the, the, it's like the generation that we're in, we're just so quick. Everything, we just mm-hmm. want it so fast. I got to hear and it. And you got to take your time and 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 really listen and understand. Like, it, it, it will be clear what you have to do. Somebody made a, um, I think it was a pastor, I think, made a reference to, um, um, Jesus, um, is this is, 
Abraham took his son on the mountain to sacrifice him. Mm-hmm. That is Abraham, right? Mm-hmm. All right, now nah, y'all heard me. Uh, <laughs> so, so right before he sacrificed his son, there's a what? A word. A ram, ram in the bush. bush. Yeah. I mean, but it says stop though. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. There's a word from God to stop. There's a ram in the bush. Did the ram just magically appear, or was the ram always there? Mm. I don't know. I ain't gonna hold you. I don't know. Rams don't magically appear. They the ram was always there. But the thing is, we get so if he would have been so focused on, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. You wouldn't have never heard God say, "There's a ram there." Mm. You see, but you know what's crazy? Oh, that is so good. Because we, we're, the we're whole so, time he's seen the ram and just thought it was just a ram, and he like, no, the sacrifice is over there. You seen it, but you just walk past it. Because our that focus, so our focus be so much on the negative that the thing is, everything that we need is already done. So how if it's already done, but I don't see it because you focused on the wrong stuff. Mm-hmm. It's already there. Your healing, your blessing, your deliverance, it's there. Yeah. That does make me shout. That is so good because a ram just not running up no mountain. That ram was literally already there. That ram was probably there, there before you got there. Or you mm-hmm. probably seen the ram and still went to sacrifice the son. And he's like, no, thank you for your obedience. Go get the thing that was already provided. Preach, nigga. <laughs> that is just, it, this that, is a real. This better be a real because that is so zoom good. In, zoom, out. Zoom, zoom in, zoom, 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 zoom Y'all are stupid. No, because that's so good. Like your provision was already provided for you. But mm. the great part about that scripture and that story is at least you were obedient. Mm-hmm. Your obedience got you to the place of provision. I just wanted to know if you was going to be obedient and do what I say do. You yeah. thought it was going to be a hard task. Mm-hmm. But when you got up there, it was much easier than when you thought, and you kept your son. God, you're amazing. Bye. Now that's a real. <laughs> God, you're amazing. Good night. Good night. That is Bye. So good. No, because you. But that again, revelations like that, you sometimes get them in these moments, which is why you need community. Mm-hmm. And two, in meditation, you Absolutely. never know what the Lord or He reveals you something to you that. He may not reveal to her, mm-hmm. but it's still valuable if you share it with her, or he may give her a different revelation that still line up with yours. Yep. That's why the word is important. Mm-hmm. I keep, you know, we are living in a day and age where a lot of things are being questioned, and I do because I, I question a lot of things as well, especially. No, because that story itself is is I, I the the human side of me is just like God, How? God, why would first of all, why would you put me through that? But you know what? I get why he would, though, because it was the very thing that he trusted and loved. That's like for us. He may not say sacrifice Dallas, so, but he may say, give your car up or move out of your house or do, or give them 10000 Why am I giving them $10,000? So here's the thing. And I need it. So here's the thing. <laughs> With that story, that's why sometimes it makes me wonder how much of the Bible is not literal, but metaphorical symbolic Mm. because we uh, a lot of people don't know the history of scriptures and how how the the scriptures came to be and how these were different like um 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 uh texts and that are held in high regard right so a lot of people don't understand how all of these texts come together so it the story could have went a different way what did you get the message and so a lot of times we get stuck on the details yeah and so I, I can't I don't know if it actually happened like that. I wasn't there. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take the 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 meat and leave the bone. Mm-hmm. The part that you don't understand, then obviously wasn't for you to understand. And that is OK. It mm-hmm. is. And don't make nobody make you feel like you slow or not spiritual because because most of these men don't arrest. know everything. I'm it trying is to, to tell you. And I and I seen pre. I used to read. Well, you know, I just don't preach now, but all of that stuff. But. I don't know every scripture in the Bible, but the ones that the Lord lead me to, baby, I'm going to extract that thing and figure out what's going on and mm-hmm. what's supposed to be spoken. But the Bible is lit, though. Like, some of those stories, I was like, this is better than love and hip-hop. <laughs> Please. Jesus Christ. Like, y'all got 12 <laughs> wives. You doing this. You praying for a miracle. You finally get pregnant, but your heart gets pregnant. Then the other baby is just like, the Bible is cra- Like, what was, what was the... um? I think it was Genesis, and I had made a post like it was either Genesis or Exodus, and I made a post like everybody was dealing with fertility, like mm-hmm. everybody couldn't get pregnant. Like you mean to tell me, but you again, these people again, were bro, with that. again, that's what that's what I'm saying. Like I think a lot of that is symbolic. 
Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like a lot of times we a lot we see a lot of the same stuff. Paul always brings up the sexual stuff, but it's just like there's so much other there's so many other things that could have been talked about in the scripture. But like you say, you'll see something and people will be like, well, God obviously meant obviously was important to God. God didn't write the Bible. First of all, a man did. Right. And this is inspired by him. Exactly. So uh, that, I, 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 that's why by Beyonce, I don't do everything like Beyonce. And that's what I'm saying. Like, that's that's where I differ from a lot of people in, in the church. Because let's zoom in moment. <laughs> We're focusing crazy. on the zoom in today. Zoom no, in but, that, zoom but that's so good, right? Because again, even what you're saying that some things may be symbolic and some were literal, literal. Yeah, I, I but do it, believe but, that. But but it does make sense. But I really do like even what you just said about the, the sexual thing. Now nah, I be looking like it's a, y'all talked about a lot of different stuff pertaining to that. Y'all must have been real nasty back then. But that's what I'm saying. Because he Once, had to really tell y'all like, please, <laughs> please, I'm begging you, stop <laughs> sleeping with everybody. What else was they doing? They wasn't on TikTok. They wasn't. They so it was more so like, the sexual sin. It was sins. just like, what else are we going to do? But Screw. the Bible does say that the sexual sin is more so. <laughs> oh. Why would you look at. Talk about. Screw. Mm. The, the sexual sin is more so what you do to your body. Mm. It was, I think it's in James or Romans or something, but it breaks down. Like that's one sexual. That, that, this, whatever you do, like masturbation or whatever, is something that you're doing to yourself. And then it was like the other things are like more so done unto people where God, I, I'm going to find the scripture and I'm going mm-hmm. to come back next episode or the oh, next yeah. next episode and tell you all about it. Okay, we appreciate that. Thank you. All right, all right. so. Um, we love the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Dream Lab Church uh, Bible, study. Bible study real quick. Mm-hmm. Back to our schedule program. Back Beep. to our schedule program. Actually, we're going to go t- take a break and we have an advertisement for you right here and then we'll be back with more stuff. So, bye. All right, what's up, dreamers? It's your girl Chrissy back with another small business shout out. All right, so we have Blair, Bobby, and Bellamy, the owners of the B Sweet Lemonade Factory. Now, y'all, let's take a minute and appreciate the fact that the oldest one is eight years old. Okay, they get into it early. All right, so they make and sell lemonades, blackberry, strawberry, peach, lavender, you name it. So go ahead and hit up our girls. Let's see, their contact number is 586-506-1906. If you want to hit them up to support their small business, we'd appreciate it. Tell them the Dream Lab sent you. What's up, everybody? Listen, for all of our small businesses, all of our entrepreneurs, listen, we have an opportunity for you to we want to shout your business out for free right here on the dream lab podcast all you have to do is send us an email with information about your business your social handles all of that stuff um if you want to send us a sample that would be great too but anyway we're going to shout your business out for free right here on the podcast just like how this advertisement is in the middle of the episode your advertisement for your business can be in the middle of this episode so all you gotta do is send us an email to dreamlabpod at gmail.com jacks i'm trying to record a video bro that's right. Send us an email to dreamlabpod at gmail.com um, and we will respond if we need any more information or we will respond and let you know um, what episode that your advertisement will be on. So make sure that you take advantage of this because this opportunity, this free opportunity, it's not going to last long. So get it in while you can. All right. Enjoy the rest of the episode. All right. Fine. What? Now that we're, we talked about unlearning. We yes. talked about unlearning and all of that stuff. So, I guess, do you all do you feel like you deal with that at all? Yes, having to unlearn. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay, so what? And if you don't mind sharing, like things. Reverse. And it's not to be long because we we're not gonna be on here much much longer. It's just you know well, just. I actually want to go first, then I start talking. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, sister. Um, I mean. It's a few things in like different aspects of my life that I have to unlearn. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I figured is applying to multiple aspects of my life, though, is people pleasing. Mm. I really got to unlearn that people pleasing. And that's been one thing I've been had to have been very intentional about. Absolutely. Um, Because it's so easy to get back into that. It's so easy to be like, okay, it's so easy to just like. And I think with unlearning anything, it's so easy to get back into it because it's a level of comfortability, even if it is toxic, even Mm -hmm. if it isn't good for you. Because you're Um, so used to it. You've been doing it for so long, right? So people pleasing is one of the main things that I have had to instill our unlearning. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
That's good. I think for me, my the things that I'm learning is, are definitely the words that I say. Um, three things. Words that I say, overthinking, and not speaking up for myself. Mm-hmm. I'm doing better with not speaking up for myself, but like overthinking, I'm starting to understand. Like if somebody texts just me and say I need to talk, don't start overthinking like, oh my God, mm. something's wrong. No. Because we jump to freaking conclusions. Yeah. Take a yeah. deep breath. Talk to them later. Worry about mm-hmm. that when you get there. And the words that I speak has been a very big thing because now I'm really learning that I'm, I don't know what's going on at the age of 31, but I am really understanding that words have power. Mm-hmm. So I'll be looking at stuff like, no, I'm not saying that. Like, if I can't make it to work, I'm just not going today. I'm not lying saying I'm sick because mm-hmm. you'll get sick for real. Mm-hmm. Mm. I, don't talk, I don't say my tire went flat. No, my tire had to go flat for real because I've been on spoke that thing and it happened. And my words got power. Mm-hmm. So just like it can do bad things, you could definitely do good things. But I'm definitely like learning to speak things and to what what is the thing the thing that the book was telling me telling us Dre, um, darn. It said a lot, so that's why I'm like about speaking, um, not accepting certain things. Exactly, that's you can. Re- that's, what that's what I'm. That's I say. Reject. Yeah. Exactly. Like I'm definitely doing it's, that it's now. either accept or reject. These are agreements. So it's just like, will you accept this agreement? Or so even not? when it comes to like sickness, like. As crazy as it sounds, but if you were born with something, like I tell you, like being born like with sickle cell, like because that was something that you were told that you have, mm. you can't see sickle cell. You, f- you feel mm-hmm. these symptoms and they said, okay, this is what this is. But it's like even with that, I tell you this from the beginning and you has, have now accepted this agreement. So now your mind, your body starts to take off. Even if that were, those were the symptoms or whatever the case is, apply that to whatever part of your mm-hmm. life you want to, you start to accept it. So then you start to embody, you start to walk in it. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing that no more. No more, bro. Whatever, like However y'all feel is how y'all feel. If I don't agree with it or don't accept it, either I'm going to say that to myself or I'm going to tell you that. Mm-hmm. I don't accept that. Yeah. Like, period. Like, you're not about to... Because so many people from the last episode that I did all of that talking... I started to realize, like, a lot of that stuff you accepted. Of course, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But now I'll be like, mm Especially, like, a prophetic word. If this ain't something that I know me and God been talking about and he ain't confirmed it, I'm going to be declining that thing like a bill collector on a Tuesday night. Your card's declined. No, for real, because some people, they can speak certain things. Honey, I'm not even like, what are you talking about? Absolutely. No, ain't no, ain't no laying in it. I, nobody no. puts their hands on me. The Bible say, lay hands on no man suddenly. And I know I got, like, I have those gifts. Especially like the prophetic, but my prophetic gift ain't never been like only a couple of times I prophesy like cars and houses and stuff. Mine has always been warnings. Mm. So sometimes I'm like, because it's, I don't it's be like you by see, you see, you see something. So yeah. it's, it, you know, like it, it, people but that's always, scary. But the thing is, people are always gonna kind of prophesy those material things because no. that's what people are looking for. So of course. I have told people, I one of my friends, um, not um, the Perrys, but uh, I'm gonna say about seven years ago, the Lord showed me one of my friends' babies dying. Mm. like she was mm. getting ready to give birth and i just like just kept praying for her all week she then when she had the baby she comes like yeah we had certain complications this happened the baby started breathing da, 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 da. i was like i'm not gonna lie to you i said i've been praying for you for the last couple of days because i had a dream that your baby died mm. and so i don't know if this, that's what you want to call a prophetic but i have i was i was getting ready to ask like so what's the difference between so i'm a uh, dreamer. being being a being a prophet and being a vessel hear me mm-hmm. so obviously they're both vessels right? right but like 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 some people can sing technically they're the technical singers and mm-hmm. some people are just vessels like they're not a technical singer mm-hmm. they be flat sometimes they're not the best singer however when they sing you 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 it's the presence of god right there like you feel it or mm-hmm. or you can just feel something there so i think some t- some of us like will have moments and we'll say oh well i'm this now and it's just like, are you really, or did you just have a moment and got, you were open enough for God to mm-hmm. use you? No, I know for me, it was a scary experience. I've always known that I had a prophetic gift. I just never really been anywhere to do it. I asked the Lord when I was a child. My both hands to God. I can't swear to God, but both hands to God. I was. Isn't sitting, that the same thing, my nigga? Mm, they just up to him. I'm holding it up. <laughs> in worship, in worship to God. I I was in my uncle Alvin's office, and they, my mom and dad, and they were like playing cards or something. And I remember I was so like engulfed in the world when I was like in high school. Like I was really deep mm-hmm. and I was just like, Lord, am I a prophet? And I promise you my CD player popped on. And it was like a random gospel song. And I was like, okay. All right, Matilda. 
<laughs> prophetically the CD player turned on. But those those moments reminded me, like those are the moments that made me want to know God more because I know that was Him. Mm. I know mm. for a fact that was Him. I just never been in the environment. So to to go back to what you asked, what's the difference between a prophet and a vessel? Is the same thing like the singer and the vessel. The singer, like you, like the analogy, the singer is skilled in that area mm -hmm. and has learned how to. So can the vessels then say, "Well, I'm a singer." Um, when it's just like, uh, no, not really, my nigga. Not really, like, but at the same time, one everything is defined by differently by different people. But I will say that we all have some type of spiritual insight because we have the Holy Spirit. I'm learning that the Holy Spirit is the they they were kind of describing it as like the giver of truth. Like the scripture I read today really said like. You need to accept the spirit of truth. And I'm like, you're right, because the Holy Spirit is going to lead you into all truth. But the Holy Spirit will give you insight. But I do believe that sometimes God gives the prophet um, a more of a sensitivity to his voice in certain things, which is why it's very important mm -hmm. to have that prayer life. And that's why I've been hard on myself, because I'm like, nigga, you can see, but you haven't, you, well, I am now. But I wasn't as connected before, mm -hmm. where it's like you have this gift, but it's, it's now stale, because you have not done what you're supposed to do to keep it sharp. Mm. But to go back to what you're saying, more people, some people are more skilled in that prophetic office and understand the value of God's voice, the integrity of saying what to say. Because sometimes I don't think prophets have integrity. I believe that sometimes the Lord, not, not integrity in how you live, integrity in how you say stuff. I know they sometimes say, God say, say it. I'm the type of person, if God gives me a word that may be a little more harsh, that everybody may not understand, I'm going to tell you in your ear. Mm -hmm. I'm not about to be like, in, in the middle, of, your dog is going to die, and I know that you've been playing with his tail at night. That's like, no. It's, it's, it, uh, it's again, to to make people less, it's to keep them down. If I talk to you down like not that, doing it. If, I'm, if I'm disrespectful, if, I'm, if I approach you that way, and because you need something from me, and you're looking like the subordinate in the situation, then it's a, it's a power dynamic. Not doing it. It's a power thing, like all the way. So I agree with you, but I, I'm not. I'm not scared of the voice of the private because the thing. And not is, everybody. Not some people that definitely have like, like gifts. God speaks to them and allows them to see certain things to to give to other people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, but it's 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 kind of like it's it's just it's spooky. Mm -hmm. It's just. Spooky. I strongly believe whatever the and I don't know who taught me this or who told me this, but I've always held held on to it. In most cases, for me, whatever somebody, unless it's a, a word of warning, some of those things that they prophesied to us, we've even we've either spoken to God about it or God has spoken to us about it and we may not have paid attention. Mm -hmm. I haven't received a lot of prophecies that have been completely, I don't want to say I haven't really received, it was only one, one guy that prophesied to me. It was like, one day you're going to be on BET. And I was like, I was four years ago. <laughs> I think it was late. He said Bobby Jones, and it was when Bobby Jones was still on. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I was on there. Not saying that it couldn't couldn't have happened, but I knew your spirit was mm -hmm. wrong. But I've received other words that was like, oh, so he you saying he saw it, and or he may have saw, it. or he may have just been it. trying to like talk out the side of your neck. But yeah. my thing is again, God don't talk out the side of his neck like that. It's true. Mm -hmm. What's true is true, and what isn't true isn't true. Like that, like mm -mm. We, we don't have to play games, like. When you was real is real and what ain't ain't True. and it's it's we there's something in us that God put in us and we know. Yep, it is on or off. Yeah, and a lot of times you you be like, I knew it. How many times have you said that to yourself? Like, man, I knew such as that this was they didn't seem right, or I knew mm -hmm. this situation was shaky, or I knew that they seemed kind of sketchy, or they was some scammers, and you was right. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So we got to start trusting that. That's the Holy Spirit that God gave you. Have that trust. Trust what's in you. Took the words out of my mouth, bro. Yep. Now let's push pause right here. Oh, I knew it. It was love at first sight. I know. All right, this game is called This or That. Uh-oh. This or that. So I'm going to give you a this, and I'm going to give you a that. 
You choose. Oh, those always be hard. It'd be something crazy. But the thing is, you can't think too much time on it. Okay. <laughs> and then we'll discuss your answer. Oh, man. This or that. Have baby feet or baby hands? Baby <laughs> feet. <laughs> baby feet. Yeah, baby feet. I need my hands. Cause I I need them. I need my hands. And I could yeah, I couldn't I couldn't play fine. keys with baby hands. <laughs> yeah, you, and you could probably do more like it's not like baby mm-hmm. big legs and little like hands. I, mm-hmm. I'm not doing it. Nope. Yeah, give me the. But you ba- can hide the feet. But you you imagine your adult body with baby feet. Perfect. I'm running. You on tumbling nubs. over, nigga. What are you running talking about? On nubs. <laughs> you ever seen a wheelchair? You ever seen a praise and worship leader fall over? <laughs> I've seen plenty. Oh my god! Not with baby feet. <laughs> Happy feet. This or so I'm definitely going with um, because I like to play the piano. I don't. Or I get a baby piano. Not the same. No. It's not the, the same. Baby, I, I'm gonna have to go with baby feet. Yep. Yeah. No, I'm looking at all of our feet like that. I it's got big feet. Mm. This is about to be What's wild. We're not gonna talk about it. Is it ten eleven? Not on right here. Don't be ashamed <laughs> of your foot size. <laughs> <laughs> not on the air is that what you said <laughs> not on but air. you had to see how she did that look at me she's like mm. <laughs> your feet probably not big you just think they big exactly I'm, I'll say this my mom wears an 11 and she always got like really good shoes I would okay here's the thing <laughs> just tell since us. we talking about it one of my feet is at 11 okay and one's at 11 and a half okay. yep you could have waited which, after we were hit which record which causes me to have to get a wider shoe no I have to go to a 12 it don't nobody ever got twelve. Really? So are the twelve? So you be having do you have you be having space in one of your one of my feet You said one is eleven, one is eleven and a half? Correct. So why don't you just get eleven and a half? Because don't nobody have eleven. She's and right. Half. She's not lying. Eleven and a half is like it's rare. non existent. So they have twelve. But they have twelve and that's about rare too. So but you have see you me tried rotating. It's eleven wide though. Eleven wide should be a little more comfortable. Yeah, but as far as my toe, it be hurting. It's be it's the got you. Foot. Mm-hmm. Cause typically, well, I'll say this: I feel like my feet shrunk. I went from wearing a size eleven to now I'm a solid ten and a half. I wish mine. No, they probably will. The older you get, they probably will shrink. All but right. we'll check my in. feet went from eleven to ten and a half. But when I when I wear an eleven now, it has to be because the ten and a half is not wide. I have flat feet. Me too. So I have to either have a wide shoe. If I do a yeah. skinny shoe, it's fine. But if I do a skinny shoe, it's over, wears, nigga. It is over. Yeah, There's no. I'm not tap dancing at all. Six six wears, the tap dance show dance. is over. Hmm? When do you ever tap dance? Saturday nights at seven. Go to the next question, fool. Because you about to piss out of my mouth. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like tap dance at seven, Mr. Oh, Apollo. Seven. Would you this or that? Have an extra arm or extra leg? Oh Ooh, my god, extra arm. Yeah, to hold yeah. more stuff. Oh, absolutely. I wasn't thinking of that, but yeah, kind of. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming. Listen. Yeah. My mind gutter, <laughs> nigga. Yes. Mm-hmm. Give me that extra arm, please. <laughs> this or that. Toes for fingers or fingers for toes? My God. What is this? Body part, this or that? Answer the question. Don't toes get, You don't have time to think. Fingers for toes. Fingers for toes. I'm just gonna My feet going to be bigger? I uh, Dang, but that's... <laughs> but they'll curl up. Oh, yeah, they will. Okay, so... Now she's walking <laughs> with a fist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck on the third arm. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is so dumb because all I can... I just said, uh, okay. Yeah. Speak to animals or speak all languages? All animals. languages. I think animals. I think we talked about this. We talked about it last episode, yeah. and then I thought about it, and I was like, "Yeah." I would be Doctor Doolittle around this mug. Yeah. Like I would be. I want to know what Jacks be saying. He be cussing. I would be talking to sure. the animals that y'all don't know exist. I'd run the world, Girl. or at least an island. Mighty God. <laughs> I'm definitely. I want people from every <laughs> nation and time. <laughs> you out here speaking every language, bro? I would be so rich with a song over in in Greece. But I just I I don't like people enough to want to talk to them in different languages. I love them. I love all people. 
I'm but here. I mean to be able to communicate. But it doesn't matter. I talk to people in English and they still misunderstand what I'm trying to say. So it doesn't mm. matter what language mm. I speak in. Like at least animals right. aren't like that. They don't have judgment oh, like that. I just be like, hey guys, I can speak to you now. Right. And they be like, finally, bro. We're can mad you that fix they- that? <laughs> <laughs> we're mad they built that house over there. <laughs> So here's the thing: what, pig for what, 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 what I actually start sounding like an animal, or what I just understand their animal sounds, and they would understand you my know English what? language. And Doctor Doolittle, we never seen it. It sound like he was talking their language. Yeah. So I think no. he just spoke in English, and they just understood. And then whatever they did, what did they do back? Because they didn't speak in English, did they? They did. He he interpreted what they were saying. Yeah, I about to say he interpreted because they would be around other people and they couldn't understand them. Right. Wow. We've so been, does that we've mean been on this question way too languages? long? Anyway, go ahead. Is it animalese? Huh? Like the language that animal speaks. Animalese? Animalese. You're crazy. Okay. You are so good for that. My God. My tea. God. <laughs> Go out or stay in? Stay in. Mm. Stay in all day. Yeah, stay in. Listen, I love my peace. I love just, and I, it's, yeah, that's what it is. It's pe- like, mm-hmm. oh, I yeah. curated this. Like, I created this peace. This mm-hmm. peace. And my oh, I don't want to go nowhere. You come where, nigga? Mm-hmm. No. And I had to pay bills here. That's cool. Okay, I might as well sit in there. Facetime me so I won't answer. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> fame or fortune? Fortune. Fortune. Yeah, for this sure. Because fame. fame is because we just told you we didn't want to get out the house. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the fortune, please. It's so crazy though. When you, I was a kid, I wanted to be famous so bad. I did. I wanted to be a cheetah girl. You wanted to be a cheat, like you wanted to be in the group. Mm-hmm. I wonder did other black girls want to be a cheetah girl? I mean, I'm pretty sure they oh, did, absolutely. and not just black girls, but girls of color. Was it a white girl in the cheetah girls? Yeah, uh, Sab- Sabrina. Yeah, Dorinda. That was her actual name, but yeah, the Dorinda. white girl's name was Dorinda. Yes. Yeah, Clark. Clark Cole. Cole. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> That's wow. The only Dorinda I know. Okay. But now I think about it, her name was Dorinda. Yep. The window, you keep putting a W in that mug, and I love it. <laughs> the, window. <laughs> the window, she was an orphan, remember? Yep, it was Galleria, the window, Dorinda, Chanel, Chanel, Dorinda, and Aqua. The window, the window, name Aqua, yeah, Aqua and the window. Why? Um, yeah, hey, I'm moving on well, to the next it's question. Agua. Anyway, let's see, <laughs> poor and happy or rich and miserable, poor, poor and happy. happy, yeah. I disagree. Give me rich and miserable. I'll figure it out. Most of our problems is because of money anyway. Mm. I mean, it depends. I guess you're right. You I guess you're say right. I can figure it out. Yeah. That, yeah, because miserable because it's something that I can't control. That's very true. So never mind. Poor and happy. Mad so oh, yeah. like- <laughs> <laughs> you rich, but both of your eyes keep bleeding. Man, that's, that's terrible. crazy to me. Yeah. No, thank you. All right. Let's see if we got something a little juicier. Ooh. Yeah, I'm juicing, juicing. How oh, far is the road? <laughs> oh, let me turn Do Not Disturb mm, off. Yeah. Oh, it's been picked up. They just sent a message one Boy, minute ago. If you would have said it was outside, I would have got so angry. They would have rang the doorbell. Well, I get notifications from outside, so. We outside! Nigga! 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 All right, we got a little time to get a little juicier. All right, let's see what, we, see what we got. All right. Um, who's your first celebrity crush? Morris Chestnut. I hear that often from women. And he's still my celebrity crush. I, mean, okay. I love that man. Him and it just one. You didn't have a celebrity crush growing up? No, now that I'm looking at it, I don't think none of the celebrities are none of the celebrities are fine to me where I'm like Morris, if you watching this, I think you fine. So That's what's yeah. up. I don't I I don't met fine a Put Morris Chestnut in the comments right now. I used so to, I used to love in Lisa, Lisa Ray. Mm, mm. She is fine. I just can't get over her cousin getting raped in that movie, and it wasn't her fault. But I just can't. <laughs> I said, it ain't none of them fine to me. Like she's pretty, but I don't know. Real? I oh, I got a celebrity crush now, kind of, but you didn't ask me about right now. Yeah, I didn't ask you about right now. So moving on. Read the second question because it does ask that. I'm skipping around. See how you nigga. do me? You see how my brother nigga. does? <laughs> he gets on my nerves. Big spoon or little spoon? As in, what you? What do you prefer to be? Cuddly wise? Yes. It depends. Mm. It depends. You know, I, I used to be really scared 
of the spoons. Little spoon. I did. Let's tell a story. I can tell a story. I Go ahead. Don't tell it. When me and Taylor were dating, I was like totally scared of that. Until one day she was like, I was like, oh, I like this. Grab your ass up. I was like, come here. Yeah. Come to here. make a bike kind of strong than the mud, y'all. Y'all can tell her that. Uh, come here. Love you, best friend. But no, she. I, I was always scared of these. Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I ain't going to hold you. Every yes. now and then, okay. every now and then being a little spoon, I ain't going to hold you. I'd be like, I'd be feeling comfortable. I don't. I, I think the first time she did it, I didn't feel less masculine. It felt like you said, "Oh, this is nice." Uh, oh, wow! There go your questions. This is okay. Your question turn. is: I like being both spoons, yeah. fork, knife, plate. I'm ambidextrous. Cup. What's that? You from Amsterdam? Yeah. Go ahead. I said, "Well, I like being the little spoon, but I don't mind being the big spoon." I like being a little spoon. You can hold me, bestie. <laughs> so, have y'all ever? Heard, I saw this on a podcast yesterday <laughs> about about like I don't know what they're called. Like maybe cuddle buddies, where this it's your friend and y'all don't do nothing but cuddle. Like I saw this on a podcast. Mm. Like y- y'all not in a relationship. Y'all don't have sex. Y'all don't kiss. It's just more so just cuddling. Like you never do. Like yeah, like uh-huh. maybe yeah. No, they didn't say anything else. They just said it was cuddling. Like uh-huh. okay. <laughs> so what do y'all think about it before I give my answer? Because not hearing. You I think it's. I think it's. I, I think it's dangerous. I mean, yeah, we all like. I honestly, it, in my <coughs> in my manliness as a man, especially if I was a single man, like I would be. If, if a girl was just like, I just want you to come over here and cuddle. No, nah, then again, I'd be kind of pissed. Yeah, I, that's why I said I feel like it's dangerous because I would just be like, oh yeah, that's cool at first, but then after a while, it's just like. All right, um, yeah. I'm just coming over to cuddle again. Like you don't want, you don't want this. Jumping, jumping. Mm. What you think? Hmm. I kind of agree. It's it's pretty dangerous. It's I a feel slippery like slope. It is. It is. I've but I've also just never had somebody that's a friend that I'm like I want to cuddle with you. Like that's it. Like, like, and it don't even have to be in a sexual way. Like, hey, I'm about to watch this movie. They just come over. They just cuddle. Y'all watch the movie, and then like that's it. But that's because for me, like physical touch or whatnot, I'm not like a touchy feely person. Oh, uh, unless I like you. I am. So. I am. So I would. I probably will misinterpret. Yeah. Unless I like you. I feel then, like so. I feel like I feel like you like me, and you don't really know how to. Really oh, go there, so you trying said. to introduce? Oh, let's cuddle. Just like, all right, we go cuddle, and then. <laughs> so Netflix what? said, "Are you still watching?" And no. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, what is your thoughts? I don't know because actually, here. So I was totally against it. I actually, please, I hope this individual has to get mad. I have a friend that. Don't as long as you don't say this person's name, no, I don't no, no. Think- they they've done that. I've always expressed like I that's not something that I think is appropriate, mm-hmm. or I just couldn't understand it. I was like, so you know someone who does this? I do, but hearing you say this, I'm kind of like, okay, hearing it from y'all, I'm kind of like, I almost don't see nothing wrong with it if you guys have pure intentions. Like we just chilling. Because I was like, why are you doing that? I'm like, it's was something done it's, to you? It's, like it's something missing. But it's the physical touch. I feel like it's I feel like it's a uh um it's a um reassurance, a physical reassurance. Yes, and that's why I'm like listening to y'all talk. I'm like, no, maybe because I of course to my my friend, I never thought that they were weird. Mm-hmm. But I was just trying to understand like why why would you wanna, you know, cuddle? Like yeah. Me being and then it's young, also like, like you don't get the opportunity to then do that if you're not in a relationship. Like who do you get to cuddle with? Then? That's right. what I'm saying. I will never be like, let me just cuddle with you. Like no, we we talk and we we date. Right, but if so, what if somebody was like, I'm I I I really don't have it in me right now to focus on a relationship. Um, but at the same time, physical touch is their love language. Like how do they then? Like check that box off. So you haven't had sex with this person is what we're saying. Yeah, You're just right. Strict. Because just, my, my like that's the understanding. My friend doesn't do that. Okay, I know for six? certain. No, I know for six. certain. Oh. Because <laughs> no, six? as far as as far as like the the cuddling aspect, because those were the questions that I asked. Like, well, how does that work? 
And they responded and said, it's not a sex thing for me. Like, I just like cuddling and my mind was like that you should like but everybody no, is no. different but bro I'm like, no, yeah. I'm like, everybody is different dang I'm, i gotta text and apologize like you know what my As bad for, for me, that i don't cut it with somebody Listen, but i wouldn't mind it but that's Ooh, i'm about I, to get in trouble I, yes i, I would I, no, no, Love I, you, but i you're, you're <laughs> speaking from not necessarily where you are because i i'm married married to af so but i'm still speaking you know as a man if i was single me and my wife talk about you know stuff like uh, how do you think about this what do you think mm -hmm. about that you know mm -hmm. and so honestly i think if i was a single man i, I honestly probably would try it just to mm -hmm. be like oh yeah yeah and then find myself disappointed because i really was really trying to hit and she was like nah bro like i i really like Wanna i like your company it. i like the way you smell and you know i'm five foot one and you five foot five so it works Okay. Yeah. I, Shout out to people who have stuff to say about short people. Uh, moving on. I feel attacked again. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you like it when someone else makes the first move? Please take the pressure off of me. Yeah. I'm okay with it. It depends. I'm. I'm very. Wait, what was the question? <laughs> Are you okay if somebody else makes the first move? I think the food is pulling up. Oh, yeah. It we got to go. Bye. Yeah, we about to wrap this no, up. No, it, it depends on what type of what type of setting it is. Like, it is more so like a lot of people I know, and I'm trying to, like, keep it low-key. Or sometimes I, I used to didn't care. But I don't know, because I could be dominant. Mm. Like, people laugh at me. They're like, we didn't know you was this dominant. I am. Yeah. But I don't know. So... I think our next episode, we're going to get further into these questions. Like, because I feel like this, these are good conversations. We really don't talk about like, like stuff like this. Like, we normally be talking about the more serious stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're gonna talk about some, uh, some sick stuff next episode. Six. Ooh. Because we can, because we've grown. Let's talk about um, sex. And if it's too much for you, you don't have to watch. Um, <laughs> the episode, stay home. <laughs> <laughs> um, but any last words? Why do you keep doing that? Because I, I get a response every time. So pew, pew, pew. last words for the episode: Keep dreaming. Yes. yes. Don't stop dreaming. Work on yourselves. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you meditate and spend time with God on your own, and mm -hmm. find Him for yourself. Drink your water. Yeah, and and whatever process you're in, and unlearning whatever it is that you're unlearning. Someone is at the front door. Yeah, they are. Don't forget that um, it's a process. This has been another episode of the Dream Lab podcast where we record in my home and we have food here. So now we got to go. Um, Y'all know how it goes. Peace.